I am of Indian origin. Um, I was born in Singapore, uh, but I was brought up in England, and now I'm living in Canada. So I only lived in India for about three or four years of my life before I was five or six. But going back, it was quite the experience, and it was a culture shock, and I'm Indian. We do have a Canadian culture, although we do know that Canada is a country of immigrants and there's so many ethnicities and different uh, groups of people, but still there's a culture which one has to uh, acclimatize to and integrate to. We don't want to lose our identity. I mean, I'm not saying that because uh, wherever we come from, we want to keep our personal identity intact because that's how we enrich the organization or the healthcare system where we work with. Qu'est-ce que la culture? Il existe de nombreuses façons de la décrire, mais en ce qui nous concerne, nous utiliserons l'analogie de l'iceberg développée par l'anthropologue Edward T. Hall. Selon Hall, l'iceberg représente la culture. Seule la plus petite partie, nos comportements extérieurs, peut être vue au-dessus de la surface. Les caractéristiques se trouvant au-dessous influencent nos pensées et nos perceptions. Nos valeurs et nos croyances déterminent un grand nombre de nos comportements. Celles-ci sont apprises inconsciemment alors que nous grandissons au sein d'une culture particulière et par la suite tout au long de notre vie. De prime abord, lorsque deux personnes de différentes cultures se rencontrent, elles ne peuvent voir que ce qui se trouve au-dessus de la surface. Mais si ces personnes n'arrivent pas à comprendre les différentes valeurs culturelles de base qui sont sous la surface, certains malentendus peuvent se produire. Dans son livre intitulé « The Brown Elephant in the Room », Gerwinder Gill souligne le fait que la culture est unique à chaque personne. C'est une diversité au sein d'une diversité. Il vous sera utile de garder ceci à l'esprit alors que vous ferez les exercices d'autoréflexion ci-dessous et que vous écouterez les perspectives culturelles de nos sujets d'entrevue. Ici, il discute des différentes approches de la communication verbale. In India, we have unity in diversity. We have diverse states. In Punjab, what you say is Sastrikal and you smile. But when you go to Delhi and everything, you say Namaste. You don't smile. In Punjab, yes, in, uh, there is difference. In Haryana, what they do is they touch feet of your elders. So that's how they greet. Uh, in villages and in others, you just say Namaste. And that so then you're good to go. Salam alaikum, like which is universal to many Muslim countries. About male and female, they are more conservative. Usually, strangers you don't talk to each other at all. In the workplace, they are very formal, and uh, in the family, yes, they they are more uh, relaxed and they we have a shared conversation, male and female. Yeah. In the Philippines, I would say if you meet your your manager in the hallway, it's more of a silent type to just nod your head or bow your head meeting an elderly let's say your, your grandma or your grandpa they usually take their hand and put it on their forehead that's a sign of respect when greeting them on the, for the first time yes which i don't find it here <laughs> back home we used to call everyone sir and madam for the colleagues we usually have the formal uh, way of addressing it's a filipino term it's called it's, uh, it's a sign of respect when you're talking to, to an elderly or someone who has a higher authority. But after when you work with someone for more than years and maybe it become less. Uh, for example, when I moved here, I was very surprised. Like we don't talk to our seniors like sir or madam, but it was very common. And I was talking to a nurse uh, who works with us and said 30 years ago, it would have been common here as well. So, you know, we, the things have evolved, and, but still people coming from a, a culture where they don't question authority, they may be surprised by that, that how, it, there's hierarchy, of course there's hierarchy here, but it's still less hierarchical as compared to many systems in the world as well. Just, you can ask or broach a conversation is, hey, what is, what is happening in Pakistan? What is, why did you move here as well is also a good point to start conversation as well. Um, Pakistanis are very uh, focused on cricket. They love cricket. Um, travel. Um, the Philippines is consisted of uh, like uh, more than 7,000 islands. So you can talk about the different places um, where they come from and what they have to offer, like mountain ranges to the beaches. It differs. If I'm a male, of course, I will talk about soccer. 
we have a big two, you know, uh, groups, uh, Ahli and Zamalek, and this is a very, very popular. If uh, we are uh, female, so we talk about kids. Food. <laughs> Everyone loves food. We like food. We talk about food also. This is our culture. We have very delicious food. A lot of good food. Everybody talks about Indian food and I think the whole South Asian food is taken as Indian food but there are different different kinds of food like Bangladesh has different food or Sri Lanka or Pakistan. So food and cricket. Two big things. <laughs> and then I would also say maybe family. Family is um, very important for Filipinos so that's a good conversation. In every state, wherever you go, once you talk about the politics, you're very frank with them. You can get to know anything and everything. In the last few years, politics took a very share, a big share in the, our conversations because many things happened after revolution in Egypt 2011. Everybody, even kids, uh, they, they have now knowledge about the revolution, the constitution, the parliament. We didn't like this before.